and queens, welcome back to my channel. What the fuck? Okay, let's do that again <laughs> properly. Hi, plant queens. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Sab, if we've never met before. And this is my channel where I talk about my houseplants, mostly in passive hydroponics. I was having a stressful morning filming. As you can see, my grow light fell. I'm actually re-recording this entire intro because as I was editing, I realized that all of it was blurred. <laughs> and thankfully, I was able to adjust my camera about halfway through the first plant. Anyway, that being said, this is a list of easy and unique plants that I put together for beginner plant parents out there, but also for intermediate and experts, because these are all plants that I really love. And when I say unique, I mean they're not uncommon or rare, although some of them are, but I just mean they're not usually found in the lists that you may typically see online. You will usually see peace lilies or ZZ plants or pothos suggested. Uh, but while those are great plants, I think that we should be adding more variety to our collections. And these are some exciting plants that you can add to your own list or to your own collection of growing plants. I do go through each plant individually and give you some care tips about watering or light or pest pressures and propagation. So I really hope that you enjoy this video and without further ado, this first plant is the Philodendron Campus Fortuinum. I'm saying it now because I don't know if I was able to capture that or not. So I'll just give you a better look. And how you care for this plant is basically like most philodendrons. You give it bright, indirect light. It will do well in medium or low light, but it won't grow as fast. So I got this just as these bottom two leaves. And now it has given me one, two, three leaves and one on the way there, if you can see. So this is a very fast grower. And uh, I really, really love this plant because it's so beautiful. Look at this new leaf. I think, I hope you see what I mean. So it has these... Gold, almost golden orangey hue and yeah it grows upright so it wants to be on a pole because the leaves will change as it grows which is why I think it's a super cool plant to own if you're a beginner and just getting into the world of plants so you can see how some plants when they mature have a different form so I will put a photo up here of what it looks like in its mature form and you will see that it has these cute little lobes and still velvety leaves which I think is really really cool. I do suggest growing philodendrons in Leca. I just think they grow a lot faster compared to soil but either is fine. If it's in soil, obviously water when the soil is dry so you don't overwater it. And these plants are very easy to propagate because like most philodendrons, they have these aerial roots like there and here. So you want to just cut below where those aerial roots are and you can stick it in water or leka or even straight into soil if you like but that's a more advanced propagation method that I wouldn't recommend if you're a beginner. And in a few weeks time, it'll grow some roots. When the roots are about an inch to two inches long, you can transfer it to the medium of your choice. So that is the Philodendron Campus Portuinum. Next is a plant that is definitely one of my favorites. You can kind of see it peeking here. And this is a very heavy pot because it is in pond. Let me just <laughs> bring it up to show you. This is a Raphidophora tetrasperma. This isn't unique in that it's a rare plant or anything like that. It's just not commonly suggested to beginners, I don't think, even though it's a very, very easy plant to grow. Because I got this plant last year and it only had four leaves. The original leaves are still here. And now look at all of this foliage. So this is a very, very fast grower and it's super easy to take care of. I have this one in pond. Right now, I actually have a video of me converting it into pond. And I will talk about the advantages of pawn and leka and compare the two in a separate video. So stick around if, you, if you're interested in that. As I mentioned, this is a very fast grower 
this is under my Sansi grow lights which I would say uh, is giving it about medium to high light throughout the day for about 12 hours 10 to 12 hours a day and it seems to be really loving that because it has exploded with all this <laughs> new growth ever since I put it there and it is dripping water all over me because I had just watered this for watering you have to water this when the leaves feel kind of floppy as with most plants and with raphidophorus as well the leaves will kind of become limp or point down and that's how you know you have to water it obviously touch the medium check if it's dry and then just water it until water comes out the bottom through the drainage holes i haven't had any pests on this i don't think maybe a bit of spider mites when i had that outbreak with the alocasias um, but overall this isn't very prone to pests so i'm very happy about that it's been a very easy going plant and for propagation like the philodendron this also has aerial roots although they're a bit shorter so you can see here so you would just cut under that uh, let the cutting callus a little bit so it doesn't so there's less chances of it rotting and just stick it in water or like a and it'll grow roots in a few weeks and you can just grow a new plant from there so that is my Raphidophora tetrasperma so this is likely a plant you're familiar with because it is very popular on the internet you see it all over Instagram and the good news is this plant is beautiful and good for beginners this is my Syngonium Podophyllum Albo Variegatum. Can you see that? It's a very heavy pot because it's in pond. But you get the idea. This plant is so beautiful and it grows very, very fast. And what I love about it is every leaf, let me show you better, comes out different. So this is a new one. So you can kind of see that uh, the variegation on it is still creamy and this is an older leaf turning kind of green already so every plant every leaf rather has a different variegation compared to the older ones and that's something I love about this plant I think I got this plant with two or three leaves and I've propagated the hell out of it I can't show you right now but if you wanted to propagate this then you would just cut where you find the aerial root so similar to the earlier plants and just stick it in water as well for light I think the only tricky part about this plant is the light requirement which is you want to give it bright indirect light but not so bright that the leaves will burn and not so dark that it will lose the variegation so you want to find that sweet spot i would suggest putting it near a window but not too close that it gets the direct rays of the sun or if you have a grow light that would be better so you have more control over how much light this plant will receive as for watering just water when the leaves feel limp and your medium is dry and you'll be good this also doesn't have any pest pressures i don't think uh, I haven't had any pests from this, so it's a really easy going plant and a fast grower too. Syngoniums are so underrated in my opinion. So this next plant is one that I think is gaining more popularity lately, but not enough that I wouldn't include it in this list. I snapped something off of it. <laughs> you can already see what it is. And this is my Tradescantia Nanook. It's a very gorgeous plant. Let me just give you a look. The leaves look like a painting to be honest. I mean it's just insane how gorgeous this is. So for watering if it's not in leka or in pond, if it's in soil obviously water when the medium is very dry and the leaves on this are kind of cardboardy so they're a bit tough and when they start feeling a bit limp that's when you know you have to water already i only got this plant a few months ago and it has grown a lot of leaves for me i've propagated so many cuttings from this so this one doesn't have the typical nodes on tradescant yes you won't see aerial roots but you will kind of see uh, these lines 
like there's a line like there are purple lines if you can see that and I would just cut under that and roots will start to grow and where the line is where is where the new leaves will shoot out or it might even branch out I haven't had any pests on this either and as for lighting it's similar to the syngonium elbow where you want to give it bright indirect light it needs bright light so it can keep the colors these stunning vibrant colors and you don't want to give it too much light because it will burn and i learned that you can see this is one of the oldest leaves and this actually burned because it was way too close to the window but this is such a fast grower i even have a photo of this really root bound in its spot and i think at that point i had only had it for about a month i'll insert a photo of that because i think it's a super in cool and interesting picture and i had to up pot it to a new one and i don't see any of the roots coming out yet so that's a good sign these do tend to get leggy as well if you don't give them enough light you can see i have it in a darker spot so the space between the leaves is getting a bit longer so if you don't want that to happen just give it brighter light but not direct light next of course i had to include a hoya in this list and if you're not familiar with hoyas they are this wonderful genus that are known for their flowers but also for their leaves and i have selected one that has really stunning leaves and that is the hoya parasitica heart leaf splash so hoyas are one of the easiest plants to take care of because they really tell you when they need to be watered and you can tell if it's in soil again this is in leka so it always has water if you bend these leaves if you can easily bend them so you see i can't bend this but if they were soft, then that's how you know when to water them. Most Hoyas are unfortunately very slow growers and it does take a while for them to acclimate to your space before they start shooting out new growth. But like this one, it started out with these maybe three leaves and now it's given me all of these other nice juicy leaves. Hoyas are also unfortunately quite susceptible to pests, specifically mealybugs. They're not so susceptible to other types of pests. I've only ever seen mealybugs on Hoyas. Thankfully, this hasn't gotten any mealybugs, but most of my other Hoyas have. But those are one of the easiest pests to treat because they're easy to see and you can just dip a cotton swab in alcohol and just wipe those right off. Hoyas are pretty easy to propagate. The good thing about them is their roots can come from anywhere in the stem so if i cut here or if i cut here the roots will shoot out anyway and you just let the cutting callus over and stick it in water and once it has enough roots then you can transfer it to, your, to the medium of your choice up next is from a genus that is very popular but i haven't chosen the most popular one from the genus and that is the monstera what i have here is the monstera peru I don't want to tip it over too much because it might spill water all over my laptop. But here is a very unique and beautiful Monstera. You will see the texture on these leaves. It's a stunning Monstera to be honest. I think it is underrated even though you can easily find these plants these days. Not everyone has them in their home and i think everyone should for watering it's similar to the other plants just wait until the soil is dry and the leaves will start to be a bit softer or a bit limp and that's when you know that you have to water it i haven't had any pest issues on this one which is great and to propagate this you just find the aerial roots again i don't know if you can see that but it has those tiny spikes are the aerial roots and you would just cut below that stick it in water and it will grow roots now unfortunately for this plant the growth rate growth rate is a bit slower and roots do take a while to develop although in my experience if you put it in bright indirect light the roots will come out in a week or so but for a lot of people i've heard that it takes a while for these roots to come out but once these plants do start pumping out leaves they'll just keep going and 
This used to be one really long vine and I've chopped and propped it to create a more full plant. For the next plant, I know I mentioned in the intro that pothos are usually suggested for beginners but they are suggested for a good reason. And for this list, I wanted to feature one that is a bit more uncommon or harder to find but I think it's just the, one of the most beautiful pothos because obviously my favorite is the Marble Queen. But for this list, I'm including the Manjula pothos. And it looks very similar to the Marble Queen, except the shape on this is more round and it just has thicker leaves in my opinion. So just look at the marbling I would say on this leaf. And one thing I have found about this is that the leaves will come in bigger as it trails down as opposed to them getting smaller. I think this is because I'm giving it too many, too much nutrients in LECA. So the good thing about this plant is that you can put it in different lighting conditions. It will grow slower if you put it in lower light but it will survive, although it might revert. So I would suggest putting it where it gets medium to bright and direct light and water it when it starts going limp. They will kind of droop down so it's easy to tell or have a moisture meter to check if the medium is completely dry. I haven't had any pests on this. Both those aren't really susceptible to pests unless the plants around them have spider mites or mealybugs or something, then it can transfer very easily. Similar to the other plants, it's very easy to propagate this. You just have to find those aerial roots. But there, I hope you can see those little brown things coming out. You can chop right under those and let it callus over. Just stick it in water and after a few weeks, you'll have a new plant. Next is a plant that if you've never heard of it, may actually surprise you if you're familiar with anthuriums. Because when you think of anthuriums, you usually think of the big velvety leaf ones like what I have behind me here. Oops, you can't see that. Like this one, the crystallinum. There are also other anthuriums that have a unique appearance to them and also are much easier to take care of. And for this one, I wanted to show you the Anthurium polyschistum. Hope I'm saying that right. So this is a very cute Anthurium that kind of looks like a little palm tree. And this grows upright so you would want to put it on a pole. But for me, I kind of want to make a little bush of it so it's like a little island of trees. You can put this in different lighting conditions. I have given it low light uh, all the way to bright and direct but not direct sunlight because it might burn the leaves. And it does well in any lighting condition. Obviously, the more light you give it, the faster it will grow. And it is a moderate grower. It's not the fastest growing plant but it's also not that slow. This plant actually had a struggle with spider mites from that same outbreak I had with alocasias and this is what happened to one of the stalks although it is growing a new baby there so I'm not too worried plus I have this whole thing so I would just be careful not to put this next to any pest prone plants because it will catch those pests if you do to propagate this it also has aerial roots that you can hopefully see there and you would just cut under that and stick it in leka or water and it'll grow roots in a matter of weeks. I think this is the second to the last plant on this list. We're almost done. This is a Skindapsis, a Skindapsis pictus silvery ant. So you may be more familiar with the Exotica, but I prefer this one just because of the silver markings on it and how velvety and soft the leaves are. So this is a very fast grower like all other Skindapsis in my opinion except for the dark form. And it's super easy to care for in soil or in leka or in pond because it will tell you when it's thirsty. The leaves will kind of curl up like this and that is when you know to water it. It can survive in different lighting conditions although I've found for this specific one if you give it higher light then more of the silver markings will come out which is you know what it's known for so for this one i have it right next to the window giving it bright and direct light some direct morning sunlight as well for pests i don't think i've had any on this plant thank goodness 
And as for propagation, like all the other ones, you will find aerial roots on those nodes. And just cut under those nodes and stick it in water. It'll grow roots for you in no time. I think it's a beautiful trailing plant and mine is just kind of growing upwards, <laughs> reaching for the light. But hopefully in time, it will kind of go down that way when the leaves get heavy enough. So the last plant on this list is a plant that I think is actually gaining popularity finally because I have been seeing it on YouTube and I've had this plant for quite a while and I just think it's so beautiful. This is an Amidrium zipelianum. Amidriums aren't that popular and I think this is the most known, commonly known one and for a good reason because look at how gorgeous those leaves are. So again, it kind of looks like a palm or a fern somewhat and it just has such a unique leaf shape and it's so easy to care for which is why I'm ending this list with this one. For the light requirements, I am giving this low light and it seems to be fine with that. It's still putting out new growth as you can see here. Although one thing you should know about this plant is if you don't give it enough light, it will sometimes put out runners which are just long vines with no leaves and that can be very annoying. So the more light you give it, the more likely it will put out proper leaves and it might revert back to its juvenile form if it is in low light like this. This is also a plant that changes its shape as it matures. I'll try to insert a photo of what a mature one looks like and personally I prefer this look over the mature one so hopefully it stays like this a little bit longer. As for pests, I haven't had any pests on this one either although I imagine it would be susceptible to spider mites if it were in an area with spider mites. This is not a, a fast or a slow grower, it is another one that would fall in the moderate grower category but when it does put out a new leaf Another one seems to be always on the way, although it takes a while for them to unfurl. I imagine if I was giving this brighter light, it would be a fast grower though. As for propagation, again like all the other ones, there are aerial roots there that you can cut under and just stick it in water or in leka and it will grow roots for you in no time. So that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed all seeing all of those plants. And if you're planning on adding any of these plants to your collection, or if you have them already, do let me know in the comments below. I love seeing your comments and talking to you about your plants or plants that you want to own. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe because it really does help my channel out. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye!